Welcome back to part 3. Let's continue from the previous session. So to log in with Firebase, we are here going to say Firebase alt dot instance dot sign in with email and password, which takes two parameters, so an email and the password. Now, Sign in with email and password is a method that is asynchronous and returns a Firebase user. So in order to get the user, we have to type in Firebase user. And because it is asynchronous, we need to put an await call in front of it. And because this method is asynchronous, it also means that the enclosing method, this validate and submit here, must be declared as asynchronous. Okay, so now the next thing that we might want to do is print the user ID uh, after we receive it. So let's just put a call in here which will say sign in and we can say for example user.uid with string interpolation here. The other thing that we want to do is that if this method fails it will return an error but the way we handle errors in Dart is to put them in a try catch block. So we're going to type in try. We're going to put our code in here. And if we detect an error, we're going to say catch error. And we're going to print it as well. So we're going to say print error. E. So now we should be able to run the app and see what happens. Okay, so let's load up our simulator and this time we can type in our test email, for example, and a password. And if we tap on the login button and we inspect um, our debug console, we get an error back from Firebase saying that the email address is badly formatted. I think that's because I added an extra space in here. If I do this again, it says there is no user record corresponding to this identifier. Now the reason obviously is that while we have implemented login with email and password, we didn't actually have any flows for registering new users. What we are going to do now is to add some new UI and new widget to our form so that we can also register users with Firebase and that will complete the overview of this application. So. The first thing we want to do is to go here where we created our login button and we're going to add a new one which we're going to call new flat button and this new button will have a child which is going to be our new text and we're going to call this create an account. We are going to give this text a style which is the same as what we used before with a font size of 20. And like we did before, we're going to add an own pressed event handler, which we're going to call move to register. Now we need to define this method. So let's go up here and create it. Like this. So let's quickly see how this looks like. Uh, we see that we have a new create button um, that has appeared here. It's a flat button because it's a secondary action compared to what the login button does. And so what we want to do now is to add some new information or a new piece of state that tells us whether the user is currently logging in or registering for an account. And the way we do that is to create a new enumeration which we're going to call form type and this has two cases a login and a register case we are also going to say that our login page state now has a form type which initially is set to form type dot login all right so when the user taps on the button to register then we are going to modify this form type 
to say now I want to register and because we need this to drive a new UI reload then we're gonna wrap this inside the set state call like this okay so what we want to do now is go down to our build method that we previously defined and um, we want to switch things around a little bit. I think we want to do a little refactor because we will be adding some new functionality in here. And so what we will do is always reuse the email and password form fields, both for the login and registration flow. But these two buttons will have to somehow change depending on what form type we have defined. So the first thing that we're going to do is to pull out the creation of these two text form fields into a separate method which we are going to call widget build inputs and in fact this will return a list of widgets rather than just one because it's two of them and in here we can just cut these two values and say return and we're gonna have them in here. Quickly format the code so it looks a bit better. And so we can now call this method build inputs from um, from within uh, here. The other thing that we want to do is also pull out these two methods, these two buttons inside a separate method as well. So we're going to say list widget and we're going to call this um, submit buttons. In fact, build submit buttons. And again, we're going to return a list of two widgets formatted like so. And now we can do something here to make things look a, little, look a little bit more tidy. So this children array that uh, has to be specified for our column widget can simply become build inputs plus build submit buttons. So this is all we've done. We just refactored our code a little bit. Nothing changes in terms of how it's rendered. And now we are ready to add the changes so that we can switch between login and registration form. Okay, so now that we moved our buttons down into this build submit buttons method, what we can do is introduce the new type that we just created, form type. And we can say if form type is form type dot login, we want to return this array in this configuration. However, if the form type is not login, so that's registration, we want to arrange things a little bit differently. So here we will have this raise button where we can say create an account. And in this case, we will still call validate and submit. And I'll show you later how to switch on the authentication uh, call. And the second button is now going to say, for example, already have an account. In this case, maybe just login. And this will move to a new method, which we're going to call move to login. We are going to define this method as well up here. And it's going to be very similar to the move to register button that we created before. But the difference being is that when we call set state here, we're just going to say switch back to form state dot login. Okay, I think we are ready for a quick spin of the app. Um, and let's see, if we now refresh uh, the application, so we can try to tap on create an account. And when we do this, we can see that the buttons change and we switch into registration mode. If we already have an account and we type on login again, we go back to the previous mode. So let me just walk you through how this works in terms of flow. So when you create an account, what happens is that we are calling this move to register button. 
this in turn calls set state uh, with a new form type of form type register. Now remember that when you call set state, the build method gets called again. So this method will be called, we will be rebuilding the widget UI. And when we get to display the buttons inside the build submit buttons, we have this if statement here that will say if form type is login. In this case, it will not be because we just switched to register. And so it will execute the else branch. And this is the reason why now we will see the new uh, buttons. And again, if we type, if you type on our account login, then the same thing will happen. We call move to login, which in turn will switch back to form type login. So this is how it works, and this is how we can use state to drive updates in our Flutter app. I want to draw your attention to one more thing, and that is that uh, both whether we are running in login or in registration mode, we always call validate and submit when we tap on the raised button. So if you remember when we implemented this method, we've implemented it to always call Firebase all the instance the sign in with email and password. But with these new changes that we have introduced, this is not correct when the form type is register. So let's let's try to fix this as well. So what we are going to do here is again to say that if form type is form type dot login, then we should be executing this code to sign in the user. However, if the form type is registration, then we need to, to, to call a separate thing, a separate method, which will be Firebase user, user is await, Firebase auto-instance, and this time we want to create a user with email and password. So we're going to specify our email, password, That's right. And with this, we are now able to, to create our user. And we're gonna test this in a second. We just want to add a print statement in there as well, which says registered user. And we're gonna give this a user.uid. Okay, so again, we use this new form type logic to now drive which call is being um, performed when we try to submit our form. Um, so have we, I think we're ready to try, try this on the simulator. And um, so we are on the login form. If we wanted to create an account, we could now do that. Uh, one thing that I don't like so much is that when we switch between login and create account, this email and password stay where they are. Uh, I think it would be better maybe if we could clear them instead every time we switch between login and registration so that it's clearer to the user that it is effectively doing a different uh, operation. So um, I'm going to show you how to do this as well. So if we go down to this move to register button, there is a way that we can reset the contents of our form. So the way we can do that is to say form key dot current state. And here we can say reset. And similarly, we are going to do this when we are on the move to login screen. So now that we've added this change, let's see what happens. When I tap on this button, we can see that the form is now cleared. Okay, now we are finally ready to create a new account. So I'm going to say that the email is test at test.com and the password is test. I'm going to create an account and this time around if I inspect my debugger I can see well it tells me the password must be six characters or more so let's call it test1234 to make Firebase happy and finally we get our first registered user so from this point onwards if we were to use this user to sign in uh, with Firebase, we should be able to do that. So let's try out. 
I'm going to back to login. I'm going to say test at test.com. I'm going to put the correct password test one, two, three, four. And when I try to log in, I do get a signing user. Bingo! So our login and registration form is now finally working. And just to verify that we have created a user with our Firebase backend, we can go back to Firebase and if we inspect the users tab up here, we can see that the test at test.com email address is registered and that we have a user ID. So this confirms that everything is working as intended. Congratulations for making it to the end of this tutorial. We have covered a lot of ground today and we have seen an introduction to Flutter. We then created a new project from our terminal and made a new app completely from scratch. We have built our own login and registration flows and we've added Firebase authentication to our app. In the process of doing so, we learn about widgets as the building blocks of any Flutter application and the difference between stateful and stateless widgets. We have seen how to create layouts in Flutter and how to manage application state and how to create forms so that we can handle user input, validate it and save it. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to ask me any questions, I will be very happy to help and I hope to see you here again for the next videos.